Dear learners, Namaskar. My name is Dr. Shweta and today I am going to talk about Psychology, Understanding Self and Others, Part 3. The objectives of today's discussion is to make you learn about the different fields of psychology, the current trends that are in psychology and the careers in psychology. Let us first know about the different fields or the different branches of psychology. First of all, we will discuss about experimental and cognitive psychology. Experimental psychology has been concerned with the study of psychological processes such as sensation, perception, learning, memory, motivation, emotion, etc. It is basically related with how do we sense and perceive the world around us. The new field of cognitive psychology happens to be the closest one to experimental psychology. It also tries to explain processes involved in the perception, comprehension and use of information for various purposes. This is a kind of diagram uh, which is showing a flow chart for types of long term memory. This diagram is here in order to explain to you that the cognitive psychology is trying to understand the different processes experimentally uh, say for example that how do we process the information and how do we store the information in our mind physiological and comparative psychology this is another field of psychology this field of inquiry is devoted to the analysis of biological foundations of behavior. The field of comparative psychology investigates the dimensions and complexities of behavior among animals like rats, pigeons and monkeys and compare those across species. Which means that on doing experiments on these animals, we try to understand or we try to generalize the behavior of other species as well. If the animal is behaving in this situation in such a way, how would other species behave in the similar situation? That is why it is called comparative psychology. The next branch is developmental psychology. This subfield of psychology deals with the problem of changes in behavior throughout the lifespan. These changes take place in physical, motor, cognitive, personality, emotional, social and linguistic domains. Which means that as we grow, there are considerable changes in all these aspects of our personality. The study of changes may be undertaken by following the same person for a longer period or one may study people of different age groups. Which means that because we say it is developmental psychology in order to understand the developmental processes in an individual, how do we study it? Either we take one individual, say for example, we take one child from age uh, 1 or say from age 3 and we try to analyze the developmental changes in that person throughout the lifespan or for some time, say for example, 10 years or 15 years. And the other way of studying the developmental changes is we can study people of different age groups which means that in order to study an individual or the developmental changes we may study the developmental processes in people belonging to different age groups. The first approach is called longitudinal and the second is called cross-sectional. Why the another one is called cross-sectional? Because we try to understand the developmental processes by taking into consideration the people belonging to different age groups. The important divisions of this branch include child psychology, adolescent psychology and psychology of adulthood and aging. This means that we have taken all the age groups. The next branch of psychology is known as social psychology. Social psychology tries to understand the influence of other individuals and groups on our behavior. Perceiving other individuals, forming attitudes, persuading others to change their views, 
prejudice, interpersonal attraction, group decisions, social motivation and leadership are important themes in social psychology which means that everything which is related to an individual in the society is studied under social psychology. Social psychology tries to understand the behavior of an individual in the society. In this slide, we can see that a lot of uh, people are together. So what is the job of a social psychologist is to understand how the society is influencing each other's behavior and how it influences an individual to adapt to the social environment around them. More recently, great concern has been shown for applications and a new specialization entitled Applied Social Psychology has emerged. The next branch of psychology is known as Educational and School Psychology. This branch of psychology tries to help solve the problems of teaching and learning in classroom setting. It helps the students and teachers both to deal more effectively with the learning situation. This means that educational and school psychology is interested in the behaviors of the children in school and how teachers can help students to adapt to the school environment. The educational psychologist plan and suggest curriculum to a school board in the light of students' interest, abilities and needs. The job of a school psychologist is to deal with more immediate problems in the school. This means that the educational psychologist is mainly concerned with the content that has to be introduced by the school boards keeping in mind the interest and abilities and needs of the general population as a whole whereas the school psychologist is dealing with the problems faced by the children in the school. This slide depicts the educational psychologists who sit together and finalize what content needs to be introduced by the school board keeping in mind the abilities of the children. The school psychologists are particularly concerned with the diagnosis of learning difficulties and their remediation and vocational and other forms of counseling which means that uh, you might have seen that today a lot of schools are appointing school psychologists and those psychologists are trying to help the students to choose proper career for themselves and counseling them for dealing with the school environment. The next branch in psychology is known as counseling psychology. A counseling psychologist deals with people who have milder emotional and personal problems. She or he tries to enable an individual to utilize his or her present resources most effectively in solving personal problems. Counselor's task is to modify behavior in areas like marital life, delinquency, school, maladjustment, dispute in work settings, etc. You might have also heard that when people have problems in their married life, they go to a counselor who deals in marital counseling. Uh, there are other counselors also. Suppose for example, at your workplace also, different companies appoint psychologists so that it helps the human resources in working properly. The counselor systematically changes the behavior through various procedures including behavior modification, modeling, sensitization and rational thinking. We will learn about all these techniques later in this course. This picture depicts that how the psychologist sits and tries to understand the behavior of an individual and helps him or her in solving or in dealing with the problems. The next branch of psychology is known as clinical psychology. The general image of a clinical psychologist is that of a doctor who diagnoses psychological disorders and treats them using psychotherapy. But he or she is not a doctor and should not be confused with a psychiatrist who holds a medical degree. 
The differentiation here is that a psychiatrist is a person who has done MBBS but a counsellor does not belong to the medical field. He or she cannot prescribe medicines as the psychiatrist can do. The clinical psychologist uses various techniques to relieve the symptoms and to help people understand the reasons of their problems. A clinical psychologist strives at changing personality in order to enable a person to cope with his or her situations in an adaptive manner. And this is done by different uh, psychotherapeutic techniques or the counseling sessions. A clinical psychologist mainly aims at the identification of negative or problematic aspects in development and their elevation. For example, a clinical psychologist treating a phobia which is a kind of unreasonable fear behavior tries to remove reinforcement that maintain the behavior and at the same time provide reinforcement in order to promote learning of more rational and effective coping patterns in people. For example, if a child fears white dog, white furry things, white haired women, then the job of a clinical psychologist is to remove that phobia from the child in an effective manner. The next branch of psychology is known as industrial or organization psychology. As the name suggests, industrial or organizational psychology relates to the behavior of human beings in industries or in organizations where they work, which is their workplace. Psychologists working in this area help industries and other organizations in personal selection, trading, solving problems related to communication, productivity and interpersonal and intergroup relations. Interventions for organizational development, for example team building, are currently employed to improve the conditions of work settings and enhancing the quality of products. That is, how do you help people to work in a group in the organization and how do you help them deal with their interpersonal problems is all taken care by a psychologist who specializes in organizational or industrial psychology. What the psychologist does for the people in the organization? They might plan certain games or certain activities that help people to cooperate or to work in a group. These are kind of recreational activities but their main aim is to help people or to build the group working conditions effectively. The next branch of psychology is known as environmental psychology. This is a relatively new field of psychology which specializes in understanding the relationship between human beings and environment which means that what kind of environment we are in affects the behavior of the individual. Environmental planning, environmental perception and attitude, design of environments, environmental stressors for example crowding, pollution, disaster and environmental attitudes are being studied. Which means that if a place is too much crowded, how can it affect the behavior of an individual or if the places or the environment is too much polluted what are its effects on the individuals as a whole. The goal of environmental psychology is to save the environment and improve its quality. The next branch of psychology is known as engineering psychology. Human life in the modern world is dominated by machines of various kinds. Wherever you go, whether you are in school or in college or at your workplace, you have to deal with machines. It may be a computer, it may be other mechanical machines. The engineering psychology, also known as human factors engineering, tries to specify the capacities and limitations of human machine environment system so that 
the system can be operated safely and efficiently. For example, while making a computer, it has to be uh, kept in mind that how it should be designed. For example, in this picture, what is the distance between the screen of the computer and the person sitting? It also affects the behavior of an individual. So, engineering psychologist deals in paying attention to all these specifications while making machines to be used by the individuals. The next branch of psychology is known as health psychology. It is an emerging branch of psychology which focuses on understanding the factors that promote the status of health. In contemporary life, the number of health hazards, for example, stresses, frustration is increasing. In order to cope with them successfully, we need to adopt pattern of health behavior such as exercise, meditation, proper diet, physical activity, etc. Which means that it is basically related to the biopsychosocial environment of an individual. This means that how you get yourself adapted in an environment, how do you uh, select the appropriate behavior patterns that enhances your health. This is a picture which depicts that uh, the animal is telling the human being that I eat nuts every day and there is a healthy reason behind eating nuts every day. This means that health psychologist deals with helping people in adopting proper healthy behaviors. Health psychology examines the role of those behaviors in promotion of physical and mental health. It also tries to find ways to modify inappropriate behaviors and prevention of illness. Now, this was all about the different fields that are there in psychology. We will move on to the next topic of discussion, which is the current trends in psychology, which is the changing phase of psychology. The first is emphasis on cultural context. Psychological phenomena can be understood in specific cultural context in which they take place, which means that the culture of an individual affects the behavior of the individual. The studies in cross-cultural psychology and cultural psychology shows that many of the concepts, for example, self, morality and the practices, for example, socialization, life tasks are culturally specific. It is therefore necessary to understand these issues and processes in their cultural context. For example, if we live in India, we have a collectivist culture, which means that we all believe in living together and working together. This means that the culture of any place influences the individual behavior. The next is the breakthroughs in neurosciences. In the recent years, Considerable knowledge has been gained about brain and other parts of the nervous system and biological functioning because it has been established now that the biology of the individual is responsible for the behavior of the individual. This has helped in not only understanding the nature of psychological processes but has provided ways and means. For example, different drugs are there or different medicines are there to cure various diseases. The one who specializes in neuropsychology tries to find out the reasons for the individual maladaptive behavior in the biology of an individual and tries to sort the problems with the help of different drugs or medicines. Now, the next very recent development in psychology is known as multidisciplinary concerns. Human reality is complex and one discipline cannot properly comprehend it. Collaboration of linguists, anthropologists and cognitive scientists is taking place in the study of issues related to language, personality, emotion and values. In the discussion, why we are talking about multidisciplinary concerns? Because as of now, 
I talked to you about the different fields in psychology. What is engineering psychology? What is health psychology? And so on. Which means that in order to understand the human behavior, one aspect is not enough. So in order to understand the individual behavior, the behavior is studied from multidisciplinary or multi aspects. For example, why a person is behaving in such and such manner can be related to the machines or can be related to the working environment which is around the individual, can be related to the biology of an individual or anything else. So it is very much necessary to understand the behavior of an individual, we should take into consideration the multiple aspects around the individual. We shall talk about psychology as a career. If you take up a course in psychology, what might be the probable career options which you may have? For example, you can be a PGT in psychology or a counselor, the examiner who conducts various tests. Examiner here means that the particular psychologist who conducts aptitude test, who conducts the intelligence test in order to help you choose the appropriate career. Psychologist in an industrial setting because we talked about industrial or organization setting which means that if you take up a psychology course you can be appointed by the industries to help the people in dealing with the working environment. You can be a researcher. In the very beginning, we talked about the academic psychologist. The academic psychologist deals in the theoretical foundations of behavior. You can work in an NGO as well. You can be a lecturer in the colleges. You can be a clinical psychologist. You can be a child psychologist which mainly deals with the problems of children's only. You can work as a health psychologist, you can be a school psychologist or you can be a human factors psychologist that is how the factors around you affect you and your health. But it should be kept in mind that all the jobs that are stated here demand at least a graduate degree with specialization in a particular field of psychology. For example, if you want to be a child psychologist, you need to have a graduate degree in psychology with specialization in child psychology. With this, I end up for today's discussion. Thank you.